McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 18 of this NHL 20 Draft to Glory franchise mode. This has got to be it, guys. This has got to be the episode where we finally get this team turned around, get it moving in the right direction, and I mean, we have the opportunity here. We have uh, we do not currently possess the first overall pick, but there is a franchise uh, center, 5'9 playmaker here in Cooper Pisani, who I would love to acquire. I mean, yes, our consolation prize would be Jesper Larson, but... Man, I just don't see that. Like, we don't we don't need Larson. That's the problem right now. So, I mean, there are other guys in here like Pentakainen or, you know, Milroy is considered to be NHL ready. Like, there's a lot of solid prospects in here. It's just more a matter of uh, we need pieces that will help us pretty much right now. So, that's where a guy like Cooper Pisani really comes in. Um, a lot of these other guys have like, you know, three or ETAs. They're not like super exciting prospects. There are a couple good players in here still, but you know, we'll have to make some trades, move things around if we are going to select anybody here. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, kind of quickly go through, figure out exactly who we're selecting, where we are going to be picking them and that kind of stuff. And then we will get into the NHL entry draft where I will probably make some trades to acquire different picks. So guys, we're jumping into the NHL entry draft here, and really, we only have one goal. Um, we've got pick number 16 as well as pick number 2, but we have to... I, I know St. Louis doesn't want to trade that pick. I don't care. It's a franchise center. We have really needed some kind of piece here to kind of bump our team to the next level and haven't had it so far, so that is what we are looking to acquire right now. I'm going to say our best bet for trading a piece here is probably going to consist of a guy like, oh, fuck, Marcel Audette got it up to a 90. I was kind of thinking of trading Audette, but, like, the way he's playing there and how good he is, it's like, can we really trade him? Probably not. So, yeah, I mean, the team's in pretty good shape as of right now. So maybe we trade a lower-end prospect that we just acquired, like Tikkanen plus... You know, we're going to have to overpay for this. There's no question about that. So we go Tikkanen, Hainsey. Oh, Coral Uke. Oh, man, I thought he was going to be better than he was. Um, Coral Uke, Hainsey, or sorry, Tikkanen, Hainsey, and the second in exchange for the first should be enough value. Like, we're totally overpaying. And I would expect St. Louis to say yes to this as they're, you know, they're just moving down one pick, but they're adding an extra two prospects. So I'm hoping this goes through, and it doesn't. So that shows you just how valuable uh, Cooper Pisani really is to uh, the St. Louis Blues. So that means that we're going to have to add something else into this deal. And man, honestly, what I'm feeling right now is probably going to be Yaroslav Askarov, simply because we have another guy in Kapitanov here who's still got a year left on his rookie deal after this season. Um, he's younger, he's the same rating, and we have other guys like Mueller coming up who are going to take, uh, are going to need spots on the roster. So I could see us trading Askarov too. I just want to go through before we actually make the, actually, you know what? We're going to make this deal. We've only got a minute left and obviously that's going to go through multiple morale changes, unfortunately for trading away Askarov, but that was going to happen anyways. Okay, so we are looking through the draft class here, and what I'm seeing is that we definitely need to move a couple, or make a couple moves here still, just to get this team kind of where we want them to be. And, uh, yeah, one of the first things we definitely need to do here is move, um, who are we looking to move? Oh my god, okay guys, look at how much Peacock grew over the last year, that's insane. He was 50 rated, remember that, 5-0. He's a 67 rated sniper now. That's insane. Jeez. Okay, so I'm trying to make a trade for around pick number 40, I think is what I was looking for. So Capitals, Red Wings, maybe even no, mainly Capitals and Red Wings. So where are their first round picks? 
Capitals and Red Wings. Looks like Detroit would probably be the best team to make a deal with here. Just because I want to kind of trade up with them. So, um, there are better prospects at the top end of this draft besides Pisani. So, if we could somehow move, like, I don't really want to move either of those guys or St. Jacques. Did he just, what? St. Jacques just played for our team for a year, did he not? Yeah, he did. Okay. Um, but no, if we can move a guy like, even like Bryce Anthony, man, because he's, yes, he's, you know, he's a good pick of ours, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, 10 million, man, he ain't worth it. And uh, <laughs> we don't have a lot of other guys worth value here that I really want to move, so... I mean, Scavello's kind of on my radar there for guys that I do want to move, but he's considered a top two defender, which I find very interesting because he sure is not rated like one. Um, okay, so let's try. If we can go Bryce Anthony plus the 16th to the Detroit Red Wings. They don't want Bryce Anthony, so for the 8th and 38th. See, that's a deal I would like to do. But Detroit would be over the cap, so obviously they're not going to take that. Um Let's see. Skaters match in their trade block. Who do they want? See, they want Rodgers and they also want Bannister. Bannister would make the most sense to me as, you know, he's kind of yeah, he's kind of not... I mean, he fits our system well enough, but, like... If they take Bannister, I would do that deal all day because then that means we're getting a better, young, younger prospect and that we could probably turn into a defenseman or a winger. It doesn't really matter. We have enough prospects here. And the other thing is I don't want to be paying a ton of money on every defenseman. He's going to request a ton of money next year, so... That's rejected still. Oh boy. Okay. I do recognize the time there, guys. Don't worry. I do recognize it. But if we could move like that Minnesota second rounder next year too, too far off the table. See, that is something I find interesting that they reject it, but it's actually a pretty good deal for them in my opinion. So... We could go Reichel plus that second rounder next year. And if this doesn't go through, then it's not happening. And okay, so that does go through good. But now it is time for us to make our selection here of Cooper Pisani. I'm going to be the next face of the Reading Royals. And uh, yeah, welcome to the team. 80 overall, so not as high as I had hoped, but... Since he is a medium elite to start, or medium franchise, sorry, to start, he will grow very quickly, very fast, and become a very good winger. Um, let's see what we missed on there. So Larson was only 78 rated. We definitely made the right move to trade up. Sagan was bad, man. Yikes. Ronin was not great. And, yeah, Ferkner? Ferchner? I don't know how you say it. Went to Anaheim there. Again, not the greatest overalls on those guys I was really expecting those players to be a little bit higher rated but now we have a dilemma because Pentakinen is a guaranteed medium elite left winger but he's not really that good by the looks of it he's got three years until he hits the NHL which you know we can wait that's not a problem but there's also a guy like Trevor Milroy he might only be top six which is the risk that we take by picking him but, you know, like, I kind of I kind of get the feeling Milroy might actually be elite. Like he, like, he put up 64 points in 63 games, so that's really solid. What did Pentakinen do? He was playing in a men's league, so that was a little different. But still, at least he's guaranteed on his potential. Mm, I'm going to take Pentakinen, but I would very much like to take Milroy still too. So we're going to take Lasse Pentakinen see how he turns out, and I mean, he's going to be elite, 65 overall, so that's not bad, he's only a two-way forward though, I was expecting something a little different, but let's see what we missed on here by not taking, um, what's his name here, not Hackett, Hackett, I kind of got the feeling it was going to be high top nine, 
Milroy, 75 rated. Okay, so we sacrificed 10 overalls for the potential, which in my opinion is worth it. Pensakainen, we make the right pick there. And, I mean, our last 8th overall pick that we selected, if we look all the way back through, I mean, I have all our draft picks written down here. So, our very last 8th overall pick was Bryce Anthony. That was the last player we ever took at 8. And, uh, I mean, he didn't really turn out for us. But, hopefully, uh, Lassie Pentakinen can kind of get his career kick started here. So, uh, we're going to sim to pick number 38 now. And... I'm sure we missed some players here in the first round. I mean, we got to be happy with the franchise player. That's always going to be a big boost to how our draft does. But uh, low elite and Fiddler and low elite and Quincy Nash. Okay, so that's that's more or less what I expected. I wasn't expecting anything too crazy, but Fiddler is a very nice overall there. So uh, the next pick we are going to go with, we're not going to take the defenseman in Jaden Cassian. Even though he looks intriguing, we're going to take the center here in Per Markstrom. He's only two years away, so that is very promising for a second-round pick. And he turns out to be 69 overall as a playmaking six foot two, I believe, six foot three center. So, yeah, very good pick for the second round there. Over to pick number 47, Cassian. Yeah, no, we definitely made the right pick with Markstrom, just based on the ETA. And I think the next guy we're taking here, oh, see, this is where things get a little more blurry, and I'm not entirely sure who we're taking here. I do kind of want to take a defenseman now, just based on the fact that we've taken three forwards in a row, but... At the same time, you know, there aren't a ton of defensive prospects overall. I mean, Nielsen's there, but we've got other picks between here and, and then and now. So, uh, let's see. I think we are going to take a risk here. As much as I don't want to, I you know, I'd love to just grab a guy that's like, yeah, this guy's going to be solid. There's no worries about him, but there isn't really like a top six forward anybody like that who it's like yes this is the guy we pick like I just I don't get that feeling on any of these guys so I'm looking more into defensemen at this point and I'm kind of stuck right now between I want to take either O'Brien or Hogland and I think we want to go with Hogland just because he is a two-way defender so we'll take the risk there and yeah he's a low top four so that's not great Obviously, there were better picks available. I'm sure there will be when we sim to pick 79, but um, yeah, I'm sure we missed because that was not our best pick ever. So uh, let's see, what did we miss? That is the next question. What and who do we miss? I parse would have been a good pick. Chip Chura would have been a much better pick. Yikes, man. I would have taken Chip Chura all day. Um anybody else doesn't really look like it so yeah there's you know there's two picks right after there that we could have gone for that we kind of messed up on but it happens So with our next pick, um, you know, honestly, this team is kind of more in need now of depth players than top end elite talent. So we're going to go with Alexander Yakupov because he's guaranteed he's a medium top nine forward. And actually, no, you know what? We're going to go with Burgundy, Jonas Burgundy here. And uh, hey, 66 overall is pretty darn good for a, what was he like a third round pick? Yeah. So mid third round pick. That's, that's pretty good. And then obviously we were just like one pick apart there between those two picks that we had in the third round. And we are going to go off the board and select uh, Matthias Nielsen, hoping that he can turn into something crazy from where he's at right now. Obviously 49 overall isn't the most spectacular overall, but the potential's there. Absolutely. So. So out of the rest of the third round, um, I don't think we missed on many prospects. We literally didn't miss on any, so got to be 
satisfied with that. Uh, now we've got pick number 111, and I've got a player selected way off the board from where we're currently at. So the guy I was looking at here was um, was Hosa, I believe, here. So another top nine kind of center forward, playmaker, whatever he is. And, you know, four years out. Not spectacular, but for a fourth-round pick, you can't really complain, even with that medium top nine potential. So we're kind of just zooming through this quickly here. We got, uh, we're down to our second-last pick now, I believe, after simulating through an entire round. I don't believe uh, we had anybody pinned in the fifth round, but overall, this draft is starting to look a little weak, uh, just based on the potentials here. So, yeah, I mean, not every draft can be out of the water like like blow it out of the water like the 2015 draft like mcdavid's draft here or whatever but yeah there's a couple decent players throughout here nobody like crazy like yes that is the steal of the draft like there that really isn't exist existing in this draft but um i think we're gonna take a risk on a goalie here and jacques viguer i believe is how you'd say it jacques viguer and, you know, we'll hope he's elite. I doubt he will be, but you got to take a risk sometimes to get rewarded. So he turns out to be a medium fringe starter and not very good at that. Um, obviously, McCabe would have been better. I'm sure there's quite a few guys that would have been better, but with pick 207, we are again going to go off the board and select, well, select, take a risk on another goalie here and hope that it pays off. And we are going to go with Isaac Sarich. And again, just hope he turns out. And he is a another fringe starter. So we add goalie depth, but really not the greatest prospects overall. I mean, they're seventh, sixth and seventh rounders, so you're taking big risks on them. And they did not pay off this time. So overall, for the rest of that draft, we didn't miss much. There was like two low elites, so after Sarich, so that's pretty good. I'm really happy with how the picks turned out, especially our first three there. Um, obviously, the rest of the picks were more just depth-based. Nielsen was an elite player, but, you know, I doubt he'll really ever turn out to be, like, a top four defenseman. You never know, but it's it's hard to predict. So that's how our draft turns out. It's pretty good overall, and uh, I'm happy with it. So now we come to the slight dilemma of who is going to be our main center versus like who's going to play on the wing, that kind of stuff. Because we do have a slight excess of uh, players right now, like elite players. You know, I, I prefer to have elite guys all in my top six. But outside of that, I find that they either just don't reach their potential, they don't contribute on the same level, or they just... Um, become very unhappy with like morale based uh parts of this game so that's why i try not to keep elite players out of the top six for that long so that's you know kind of what we're trying to figure out still obviously a lot of these guys have room to grow uh jamie lawton and anthony del Zotto both hitting restricted free agency so we will deal with them quite quickly um unfortunately though we do have another piece of this franchise looking to walk in Liam Zachary and honestly I'm probably not going to stop him he's going to request a ton of money that I would rather spend on other players like he wants 12 million that's crazy um he wants 12 million there and I don't think he's worth it but we do have other oh see that's a problem there with Chubasov is he does not want to sign either crap okay so um Yeah, this is going to be interesting to see how this all plays out, as we do have a lot of guys becoming restricted. I mean, most of them want to sign, but we do have two big names there that will be a problem if we don't get them re-signed. I mean, one of them will be. I'm not so worried about uh, Zachary anymore, as unfortunately, you know, he hasn't really turned out. I am actually crazily impressed with uh, Yaro Peacock at this point. I can't believe how good he's gotten over such a short amount of time as far as goalies go see Del Zotto doesn't want to resign which makes sense but at the same time we need him to play in the AHL still so I will literally offer him whatever kind of money he wants 
even if it's like one and a half million, I am okay with that if he's our highest paid goalie for another year here. I mean, obviously Kapitanov has kind of grabbed that role as their number one guy. I would not put it past Leo Mueller to, uh, I, is it Mueller or Mueller? I'm going to say Mueller. Leo Mueller to, uh, you know, very quickly surpass Kapitanov over the next season or two, but uh, it doesn't make sense to sign Paco or Vigier or, Vigier or Saric. Just there's no reason. Uh, as far as defense goes, I would very much like to get Chubisov back under contract. Even if it's only for another two years, I'm willing to pay him as much as $7 million for those next two years just to make sure he stays. I doubt he'll say no to that contract as it is our second highest paid defensive contract on the team. But uh, yeah, no, we definitely don't want to see him walk. Harkins has really shot up. Same with Karpatsev. Brenda Moore has disappointed a little bit. And then Coral Uk and even like Delamont aren't really performing up to the standard I had kind of hoped for them. So seeing Coral Uk wants way more money than he's worth. I can do one year at 1.9 million, but he's got a like he's got a lot to prove at this point after the season he just had. So uh Teratukin, I I guess we can sign him. I mean I don't think he's worth signing to be honest, but um, we don't have that many other defensemen. I'm going to sign Hogland as well, and he will probably get playtime. But um, the other big contract here is Jamie Lawton. No questions asked, really. So if we can do three years at nine on the dot, I would be okay with that. I mean, obviously, these guys are going to start requesting more money as they are realizing that they are the face of this franchise, more or less, so... Um, Davis Hickey wants a ton of money. I don't know if he's really worth that, but what can you do, right? You can tell him no, but he's got low elite potential at the moment, and I can do, yeah, see, one year at 2.3, I can do. I'm okay with that, and if he signs that, I'm all right, um, but we do have other guys like Dowd and now Kozlov. I mean, Kozlov was at that rating already. Yakimowix wants a contract for another three years. Let me just wait on him. I'm not going to sign him yet. Zachary's a no. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this left wing has a bunch of spaces to fill still at this point, And we are going to have to focus our attention on that pretty soon whether that be switching players positions doing things like that um but yeah a lot of these guys are just like ahl filler pieces they're not really going to make a difference and lasse pentakainen i would prefer to let play in the um shl or wherever he was before for another year uh let's see besides this I think it's really time for Dylan Gunther to kind of step up, start playing where he's supposed to be. Same with um, Yuka Alto, as I would very much like to see him um, in the NHL as well. That would be awesome, as we did pick him where, like 130th overall. That's That would be nice to see him actually get into the team. Obviously, he's got very little physical at 6'3", but whatever. We can, uh, we can work with that. And then in the... Okay, no, at center... This is where we really need to focus our energy because, you know, I I can see probably Pisani and Durocher playing there for the foreseeable future on this team as far as the top six goes. But besides that, for guys like Sasito, I mean, Sasito is still an integral part of this team. Same with uh, Thomas Nordquist. And then we have the guys in the AHL who just want to re-sign and keep playing where they're at. Which is, you know, that's okay with me. I don't have any complaints about that. But our center core is not as strong as I'd like it to be at the moment. That's why we added these three pieces here from the draft. Nobody's really going to. Uh, we could probably let Markstrom play. As he would probably be better than a lot of our AHL wingers at this moment. So... Yeah, that's another option. But, you know, as far as the centers go, I could very easily see Marcel Adet moving back over to the left wing here in the next year um, simply because he's just, you know, he's kind of stunting the growth of these other guys who are going to need to push into that top end kind of role here sooner rather than later. 
And, uh, yeah, I mean, we got all our contracts done here, so hopefully everybody resigns. I have offered out some pretty big contracts to certain guys, and, uh, we'll see how that works out. So, uh, Vic Strong does decide to resign. I believe it said Lawton resigned there just from the morale. Uh, Korolyuk does sign. Pisani obviously signs. Hoglin signs. Hickey signs. Ellis signs. Amble signs. Del Zotto does sign. Lapointe signs. Cecito signs. Mackey signs. Suni signs. Markstrom signs. Delamont signs. Lawton signs. Chubasov does sign. That was enough money for him. Mizak rejects because of the depth. Uh, Teratukin signs. Jilson signs. Vorobiev signs. Nordqvist signs, that looked like just about everybody, so I think just Jan Mizek turned us down, and besides that, I mean, we have Liam Zachary there, but is he really going to be in our team for that much longer, even if we did sign him? No, probably not. He has been one of our leading scorers, though. I mean, he is over a point a game in his career, which is very impressive as a 10th overall pick, but I'm sure there are other teams out there that would be very glad to pick him up from free agency. Unfortunately, he didn't really turn out as well as I'd hoped. I was kind of hoping he'd be able to lead us somewhere based on the type of player he is. But see, like Yanni Gordon, Yakimowicz, I just don't see a need to sign these guys anymore. Because we have guys like Dowd and Kozlov who will grow into their roles. We have guys like... Gunther and Alto as well, and obviously, you know, Anthony's there for another year. I don't see him much there much longer than that. Um, the defense is good. I like how it's looking right now. And then, obviously, we've got... Um, how did I sign Hoglund before I signed Lop? I don't understand that. We'll get Caden Lop a contract, too. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with how the team's looking now. Everything's a little more organized, a little less frantic with how... Everything's gone, and I cannot believe that Yarrow Porter literally took half of the money that um, that Jimmy Lawton did, which is insane. Like, I, I just can't believe that. But, you know, we're going to have a pretty solid top group here of a lot of lottery picks playing together. And, you know, hopefully they can just kind of perform and play how they need to here moving forward. Um See, we definitely have enough money to go out and sign guys like Yakimowix and Yanni Gourd. Um, I want to limit them to like one-year deals if possible just because, you know, we have other guys expiring here soon and I don't want them really taking away from our players too much if they can help it. So, you know what, let's throw Yanni Gourd like a $4 million contract just to eat up some cap space. Even though, yes, he is 36, we might get a scout out of him here over the next year or two, which would be pretty sick. But, uh, yeah, that's all we can really do at this point. I will sign them, but don't be offended if I end up trading them pretty quickly or doing something like that. Obviously, they're rentals for our team, and they're probably going to just get in the way of our prospects more than anything. So that's why we, we'll sign them for now but don't expect them to stick around that much longer. Sean Boyce didn't have enough budget, so let's... Okay, that's one, two. Yikes. Okay, please stop. So the owner kind of does want to move, which is a little bit scary. We need to start to give him... Or we need to start giving him a reason to, uh, to not want our team to move. And look at that. Nobody wants Liam Zachary, which is a little bit surprising, but not really. Because everyone's sitting there going, oh, well, he was supposed to turn out to be a really good player, and he never did. So, <laughs> what were you expecting, right? Like, Quentin Byfield's an RFA. Junton in there. Asley's. Hey, Frederick Olas. That sounds like a pretty familiar name. I would actually, I would be totally okay with signing him up for a two-year deal like that. Bring him back. Strengthen our depth. Uh, Pivko we should probably sign too, as he is our player, right? So, Matias Pivko, I would be okay with that. Um, we traded Hainsey, and the, uh, what's their names, didn't even sign him, funny enough. So, you know, we can grab him too if we want. Angelo Hainsey. 
I mean, he's only 60 rated, so probably not worth grabbing, especially at he's already 20 years old. Definitely seen some better players for sure, so. Both the goalies. Jesper Wallstead's on there again. Zerdev is actually available. Houghton. Kasparitis is unsigned at 19. But Stahlberg. Oh, he's a Nashville goalie. Okay. I didn't we pick no, that's Victor Vizhnevsky, never mind. I feel like Bednar was one of ours. No, he went to New Jersey. Okay, so um yeah, no real need to sign goalies either. Like you know, we add a defenseman or two for the AHL, which makes sense. But besides that, there's no reason to really go out and pursue anybody. Um you know, we could go and be like, oh yeah, we need to spend some cap let's re-sign Liam Zachary I don't want to re-sign Liam Zachary as he's kind of taking away from all our younger guys progressing and moving forward so you know we'll advance a few days we'll see if these other guys that we pursued sign and we'll see if anybody actually goes after Liam Zachary or not I doubt anyone will and if they don't then you know we could pursue him still I don't want to but he is available. Oh, teams are like, oh, no one's going after him? Okay, we can offer him money. So Rangers and Vegas, I'm okay with that. Both American teams and Zachary's an American player. So I have no complaints there. Um, you know, if we go and sort by potential, um, what are the odds we offer a guy like Magnus Eriksson, who's probably not even going to play on our team, what are the odds we offer him like a $16 million, maybe not 16, but let's go like 15. Yeah, $15 million for one year. Be like, hey, we feel kind of bad for not resigning you. Can you be our cap filler for one year? And we will hand over this like third of our salary, or not third, but like this fifth of our salary budget to you. And he's like, uh, what? <laughs> Like, yes, obviously, there's no way that you'd turn down $15 million as a hockey player. You really helped set me up financially. You're welcome, Magnus, but, uh, I mean, you're probably not going to play. So, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, we're going to sim to the next season. We'll get to see how the team looks, and a lot of players, or a lot of teams trying to trade for our picks and stuff like such, but I don't see any of these trades helping us, obviously, so... So heading into the next season, I think that might be one of the highest numbers we've ever seen in this series for how many tickets we've sold with right around 70% of them. So that's actually not too bad. I'm happy with that. I'm glad our team is actually progressing in the right direction. And well, let's see what the owners got for. Uh, okay, we are expected to win the cup and get 52. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I get it. We're championship status. That doesn't mean anything in this point. So, um, you know, I can understand why they're like, we need to win now. Yes, I agree. We need to win now. But um, we can't have two snipers on the same line. That's not going to work. And wow, this is actually a very poorly set up uh, chemistry system. Did our, like, wh what happened there? Did something change with our coaching like that's what i'm thinking happened actually right now because this is insane kapitanov is insane as well um mueller or muller is insane um okay hold on two seconds let me just figure out what the hell happened here um i like how that first or that second pairing looks my god but um no no let's let's figure out what exactly happened here first so for whatever reason um the team just decided that it was going to do its own thing here as far as coaching goes. So, yeah, 58% doesn't quite make sense to me. Um, Joe Pavelski, possibly. That's another option. <laughs> I would actually be all right letting uh, Pavelski coach our team. That wouldn't be that bad. But, no, I'm kind of feeling the guy right now to go with is Garon here. So, yeah, let's go with him. 
uh, hopefully he turns out, you know, offer him the job. And who knows? Who knows how he actually turns out? I think we're going to fire Connolly for now. Simply because he's just like, you know, certain players fit together stupidly well. And then a whole bunch of guys just do not mesh with this team whatsoever. Yeah, see, he's only 55%. So, yeah, um, that's that's how the team's looking at the moment. We need to, you know, just wait for this coach to kind of get back to us and get on with things here. Um, Cooper Pisani should just be in the NHL to go, like, to start with. But, um, you know, he won't be. Like, they'll, they'll say, oh, you got to you gotta do a trial. Like, whatever, man. Um. Oh, good. So Garan rejects us for a potentially toxic staff environment. Like, what? Um, so let's go and try to hire Bufflin or Pavelski then. So everyone else is telling me no. So I'm kind of feeling Joe Pavelski first here. We can offer him one and a half million. Hopefully that he... Uh, is the right fit for this team because otherwise like we don't have a head coach at the moment so come on and there we go okay and he's getting the head coach offer for four years hopefully he turns out to sign that because we are slightly lacking on coaches right now so Advance a couple more days. I didn't even look at the draft class yet, which is probably a good thing, but um Yeah, probably not gonna be anybody like crazy good in here. Lashoff might be franchise player, I doubt it, but you never know. Um Come on, Pavelski. God. Okay, so yes, Pavelski did uh you demand to be traded. Get out of here. Get out of here. You have a contract. <laughs> Come on, Scavello. You don't have to be like that. So, um, dear God, if this does not hurry up already, let's check out the lines now that we've actually kind of solved the coaching problems here. So that looks way better already for sure. There's uh, no question about that. And, you know, hopefully these other guys can somewhat fit into the system too, wherever they need to. So That's actually a pretty nice fit right there. But I do have to say the plus three with Bryce Anthony playing in that position would probably be the best bet. Um, I mean, Odette is supposedly the best fit there. I disagree. A lot of these guys don't have the best fit for the system, but, you know, we can deal with it. It's not going to be the biggest issue in this franchise mode. Where does Archer at properly fit? He fits there, which doesn't make sense. So maybe we try Pisani on the second line right off the bat, hope that he can kind of get things going alongside Odette and Lawton. I mean, both guys can definitely put the puck in the net. No question about that. But, yeah, no, this team still is definitely under the microscope, under a bit of work, and, uh, you know, things can only really get better from here. We can't do much worse than we already have. So, yeah, Kimowix does not fit there, unfortunately. Um, who else do we have? Gunther does not. Awesome. Um, so who does? Does anybody fit in here? God. Uh, let's go with Nordquist, see if he 
somehow works where he is here. And he does. Okay, so I think that is how we are going to run the lines. Even though we got a full third line of two-way forwards, I think it will still work. And, uh, yeah, no, I like how the team is balanced now. The chemistry is a lot better. As far as the defense goes, you know, not so much. It's not as balanced, but it's still solid. Um... Just trying to figure out our coaches here. So Scavello's got that shoot chemistry on him, which is why that doesn't work so well. Um, see, I think that we should probably move Korolyuk down to the AHL and call up either Olas, who's, you know, pinch and cycle, which works, or... Harkins even he could be a decent option too I mean he is defensive so not the best uh, fit actually you know he wouldn't be bad so yeah let's uh let's get this done quickly here hopefully nobody uh picks Korolyuk off of waivers because you know we want to try and keep as many defensemen as possible actually is Korolyuk on waivers Yeah, he is. So that's not good. Um, crap. Okay. You know, for 1.9 million, I'm hoping no one's like, yeah, let's grab Korolyuk. Like, that that might happen, but I don't want it to. And we're taking a risk here, so. Yeah, let's go with Harkins. No one takes him, thank God. Okay, so let's get the lines changed up nice and quickly here. Because yet again, we are trying to solve the mysteries of this team here by making moves that will hopefully pay off. So, I mean, I'm okay with the defense. It's not like that actually works way better. My God. Um, So we have a 93 rated Amir Ferguson. Obviously, it'd be nice if he was playing like he had a chemistry boost on him, but I just don't see him not having another good season. Like, he's just been so good the last couple of years here, just breaking his point records every year. And he's probably going to get up to a point per game this year, hopefully, as long as things can keep working out for him. I like how the rest of the team's set up and balanced, and, uh, yeah, no, the forward group is definitely a solid point of this team, too. Really? So, Paseni... Okay. Um, <laughs> maybe instead of Alto, we could try... Okay, well, let's go Paseni there. Let's go Alto there, and then let's sub Sacito out in exchange for, like, St. Jacques or somebody who's going to fit better and be an offensive force. Like, I just... Ugh, I don't understand why these lineups are built the way they are like it's just kind of dumb to be honest so i think we finally have the lines figured out and this is pretty much going to be what wraps up the episode is just going through our lineup taking a look at it because this is considered a championship team we've got the best goaltending goaltending we've ever had and probably one of the highest rated lines we've ever had too uh with everybody being a 90 with that chemistry boost and then, you know, we got a young guy in here in Cooper Pisani who can hopefully get a foothold on the league and kind of really propel himself into one of the best players in the NHL. Besides that, you know, we got a really solid system throughout here. Omar Archer is looking like he's going to be an absolute beast in our bottom six for now. Um, and then, you know, we got a guy like Jalen Dowd up. He was a 37th pick a little while back. Um... Yuka Alto at a pick 130 has turned out very well. And then a lot of the rest of these guys are all just lottery picks, right? So that's how this team has been built. Same thing with the defense, you know, a lot of lottery picks again. I mean, at pick 66, Francisco Rogers was definitely one of the steals of this series. And then Harkins is looking like he's turned out really well too. I mean, obviously there's just no skating there, but that's why we pair these guys up with who they are with because the offensive defensemen can usually skate really well versus the defensive guys can make 
uh, the physical plays and defend the front of the net much better. So that's how the team's set up. I like how it looks. Our goaltending is insanely good. Um, you know, obviously we never pick goalies in the lottery. So Mueller and Kapitanov are both looking quite nice right now. Um, we do have the subs there too. And then as far as the AHL goes... If it loads here, okay, there we go. So as far as the AHL goes, um, the team's still really solid. I mean, it's not as spectacular as the NHL. That's pretty basic, but uh, the goaltending is, which is the scary part here. So yeah, uh, no, we definitely have some good goalies in here. We got some good players that we can sub in, and that team is in very nice shape too. I just want to show you guys the captains quickly before we kind of shut down this episode. So, you know, we got our goal complete. We picked up Cooper Pisani. Uh, he wears number 15 by the looks of it. And I think the guy, see, they keep giving Bryce Anthony an alternate, which I totally disagree with just based on what he's actually been able to do for this team. I would much rather I'd much rather give that alternate captain to a guy like Yarrow Porter or even like almost Francisco Rogers, but not quite. I'm going to say Leo Mueller is probably number one. So we'll switch him to that because that's a basic goalie number. And yeah, that's our team. Uh, let's just check out who we've got named as captains for the Pennsylvania Tigers at the moment. Hello. There we go. Okay. So for Pennsylvania, um, by the looks of it, Olison is the captain. Uh, they only have one alternate at the moment. So let's name... Um, Who's our highest rated D? Probably Olas. Let's name D or Olas an alternate as well. So that is how our teams are set up. Uh, next episode, we will get through the 2028-29 season with this team and hopefully actually make the playoffs for the first time ever in franchise history. But anyways, that is going to be it for me. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. If you are, please go down below, leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you comment too because I love uh, talking to you guys, getting feedback, that kind of stuff. But that is going to be it for me. This is Etanios signing out, and see ya!